Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to show you what I believe is the easiest way to go from the point of having a good job to having your own business and having all of the time freedom and the income potential that comes with that. Now, when I say a good job, what I mean by that is a job that other people would like to have. So that doesn't mean that you have to be a corporate CEO that's pulling in seven figures a year. It's just, if you talk to people sometimes that are at a lower level than you, and they say, gee, I would love to be in the, in the situation that you're in, then it'll work. So I define that in the US as roughly about $50,000 a year in salary. And of course, you know, that's gonna vary by location. And it might not even have to do with the salary. It might be more of the lifestyle or the freedom or the getting to travel. But generally speaking, if you have a job that other people would like to also have, then this will work for you. So if you're working at the, you know, the bottom of the food chain at a fast food restaurant, then probably this isn't the way for you. And I, if that's the case for you, I don't mean to discourage you. I have a lot of content on my channel that will help you up to the next level. But what I'm gonna show you in this video isn't gonna work for you if that's your situation. Now, I alluded to this method earlier uh, in a video I did about how to escape the time for money trap, but in this video, I'm gonna get more into details about how to actually do it. Okay, so the basic premise of this business is that you're going to find people who would like to be where you are, who are currently in a lower position than you. Maybe they're making less money, maybe they let have less freedom. Uh, you know, whatever it is, you want to find people who would like to be in the place that you are, and you are going to teach them how to get a job similar to yours. And of course, people will be willing to pay a, a lot of money to learn this. Right, I mean, take an example of, you know, just looking at salary alone, let's say that you're making $60,000 a year. If you find somebody who's making $40,000 a year, and you say, hey, I can teach you to make $60,000 a year, well, is that worth, let's say, $5,000 for them to learn? So the question you're really asking is, would you be willing to pay $5,000 in order to make an extra $20,000 this year? and then another extra $20,000 next year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's a no-brainer, right? To pay $5,000 in order to make $20,000, and then another $20,000, then another $20,000 over and over again, clearly it's worth it, right? And then from your end, if you can get 10 students who are all willing to pay you $5,000, and you can get 10 students every month, well then you've just raised your own income to $50,000 a month, and you can implement this business model with very limited hours. Like you can work 10 hours a week or less and make this work. And this is a business model that you can run from anywhere since you're gonna be teaching everything over the computer. It, everything is on the internet, so you can travel, you can work from home. You basically have almost unlimited freedom using this business model, and it's one of the easiest to set up if you're already in the position of having a job that other people would like to have. Okay, so let's get into actually how to do this, how to set up this business. Now, there's, there's a four-step process that you have to follow. It's pretty simple. Step one is reverse engineer your path. You want to figure out how it was that you got into the position that you are in and figure out how you can teach it to other people. Figure out exactly what it was that got you to that position that you can teach to other people. Uh, step two is find a target audience. Figure out who the people are that would be interested and willing to pay for the knowledge that you have. Then once you do that, you wanna actually reach out to that target audience and sell your program. You need to get people to actually sign up for the program. And then the final step is to deliver, to teach uh, your program in a way that people learn easily, people get good results, and a way that is, uh, takes your time into account so that you have maximum uh, time efficiency and maximum freedom. So step one is to reverse engineer the path that you took to get to your current position. Now this may not be obvious right away, right? If you think about it, maybe it seems like the job just kind of fell into your lap. Well, even if it feels that way, take a moment to think about, okay, the job fell into my lap, but what were the circumstances surrounding that? How did I get that job? Did somebody find me from LinkedIn? Uh, was I doing a job search? Did I know somebody who, who referred me to the job? And then from that point, you can kind of figure out 
how you can direct other people in the same way. So let's say that you got your job from a job search. Okay, well, where did you search? What job boards were you looking at? What search terms were you using on those job boards? How did you write your resume? Um, how did you interview? How did you match your experience to what the job descriptions were looking for? Or let's say that you found that, that somebody reached out to you. Maybe a recruiter reached out to you. Well, how did the recruiter find you? I mean, if they found, let's say they found you from LinkedIn, how did you fill out your LinkedIn profile? What keywords did you use on your LinkedIn profile, etc.? Look, you can, you can figure out however you got the job. There were a lot of circumstances that led to it, and if you can reverse engineer what those are, then you can teach them to other people, and then other people can follow the same method and get the same results. Or even if you, know, you just got the job from a friend or from an acquaintance, think about the position that that person was in. Think about what that person um, does in their free time. Think about how you could network with people who have similar connections to the person who you got, with the, got the job from. If you've gotten a job through connections, through networking, then you can teach other people how to do the same networking that you've done. And again, even if you've done this completely by accident, even if you completely stumble on it, that's okay, as long as you can figure out, in retrospect, what it is that you did. If you can reverse engineer that process, then you can teach it to other people and get other people results. And in many cases, probably get people results faster and more efficiently than you did yourself, right? Because if you stumbled on this by accident, then if you can teach somebody else to do the same process, but to actually put it into practice intentionally, chances are they will reach their goal faster and more efficiently because they're following an intentional process. Okay, now let me show you a method that I find very, very helpful for this, for reverse engineering your process, for figuring out exactly how you're going to teach other people to get the result that you got. And this is um, what I call the barbell method. I got this from Frank Kern. I didn't make this up myself, but it works really well and I've been using it for a long time. So what you do, so you draw two circles on two sides of a whiteboard or a piece of paper, and then draw a line in between them. So in the first circle, you're going to be writing the starting point. And so in this case, we're talking about the starting point of the person that you're teaching, or the starting point that you were at when you started this process. Should be basically the same thing. So let's think about where you were or where your customer is. So for example, I worked for a long time as a data analyst, and this is something I kind of stumbled on, um, but it's, you know, it made a lot more money than the jobs that I was doing before. So I take a look at the jobs that I was doing before and make that my starting point. So I'm gonna call starting point uh, paper pushing. <laughs> because that's the, the job that I was doing before I learned to be a data, data analyst. I was working a paper pushing job in an office where I was just kind of following standard operating procedures. I wasn't really required to think very much and um, I made $38,000 a year. So actually I'm gonna rate that too. $38,000 a year. So chances are your, your target prospects are gonna be somewhere like this, right? You figure out what their starting point is and it might not be the same, right? Maybe they're unemployed. Uh, maybe they're they're flipping burgers at McDonald's. Although I would recommend that if you're going to try to sell a, a fairly high-priced program to someone, you find someone that has the money to pay you. So you know if you're trying to sell to homeless people, you're probably not going to make much money. But if you find somebody who is in fact working, is in fact making a bit of money, but is not at the point that you're at, is at a lower point than you, then that's probably a good point to start. So that's going to be my starting point, and then my uh, ending point is going to be. Uh, I'm, again, I'm going to be using my own example that I went from paper pushing job making 38k a year to less than a year after getting that job, <clears throat> I found another job as a data analyst making 70k a year. So this is my ending point. So the purpose of my program is to show people how to go from point A here to point B here. And so the next step is to map all of the steps in between. So just write little, uh, little tick marks on our line here, and each of these is gonna represent one broad step towards getting to this point. For my example, um, maybe the first step to getting to this point was I had to learn certain skills, right? Uh, and which is true, actually. I had to learn SQL, I had to learn Excel, 
Um, there are a few different skills that I needed in order to get that job. So I would put uh, learn skills as my, my first point here. And again, these are gonna be very broad steps here, and then we're gonna get into more detail later on. So step one is learn skills. Maybe step two is apply to resume, right? I have to write a resume that includes my new skills, that accentuates them, and that kind of integrates the new skills into what I was doing before. So I'm framing myself properly for this job that I wanna get. Okay, so step two is apply to resume. Maybe step three is to um, find ideal jobs and, and apply. Uh, so maybe this is just finding jobs on job sites. Maybe this is filling out a LinkedIn profile so that I'm, I'm attractive to recruiters. Um, maybe this is networking, you know, and, and I could include all of those if I've done all of those. But anyway, this is the, the outreach step. So find ideal jobs and apply. And then uh, last step, let's say interview, right? How to interview for a data analyst position in a way that's gonna impress employers and make them wanna hire me, right? So this is the, the high level overview of what we're gonna teach our folks. And so go ahead and do this on your own, right? If you're serious about trying this, do this on your own, figure out what are the basic steps that the person is going to have to go through to get from point A to point B. Okay, so that's the first part. The next part is that we're going to do this whole exercise over again for each one of these steps, right? So there's a certain learning curve to go from here to here. There's, there's a, a number of steps that they have to go from being in the position they are now to being in the position where they have the skills that they need to be a data analyst. And then there's gonna be a bunch of steps from here to here, right? Okay, now they have the skills, but they have to be able to apply them to their resume. So how are they going to do that? There's a progression. And then from having them on the resume to actually reaching out to the jobs and applying, there's gonna be a bunch of steps. And then for interviewing, there's gonna be a bunch of steps, etc. So we're gonna make a separate barbell chart for every one of these. Okay, so let's fill out a barbell chart for the first step, right? The first step was to have all of the data analyst skills. So let's put that as our, our um, ending point here is data analyst skills acquired. I'll abbreviate that. And then the beginning point is going to be, well, think about where is your, your ideal client beginning? So if they're just doing a paper pushing job, probably they have basic computer skills, but not much else. Right? Maybe they know how to use Microsoft Word. Probably they can use Excel a little bit. They can use email, etc. So let's just say basic computer skills as the starting point. So now the question becomes, how do we get them from the point of going from basic computer skills only to the skills that they need in order to be a data analyst? So the first thing I would say would be to identify skills, right? And the way that I show people how to do this is obviously I can give them some guidance myself, but I also want to prove it to them. So I would say, okay, let's go through some job listings for data analysts and figure out what skills they are asking for in the job description. And then we list the skills that they need to learn, and then we prioritize them and we, we go on to the next uh, step. So actually maybe we'll make prioritize, we'll make that a separate step figure out probably you could find 20 different skills that people are asking for in job descriptions, figure out which ones are the most important, which ones are gonna get the most mileage. Uh, and then from prioritize, let's say we're going to come up with or, or find resources to learn. So find resources. So let's say that they have to learn SQL and they have to learn Excel. Well, I'm gonna show them how to find places where they can learn SQL and Excel in such a way as that it's going to meet the requirements of the job that they're trying to get. Um, okay, and then, so once they found the resources, then let's do create a, a learning schedule. They're gonna have to figure out, okay, here's how much time I can ded dedicate to this course. So maybe I'm gonna learn SQL first. I'm gonna uh, dedicate the next two weeks to this and I'm gonna give it an hour a day. 
And then after that, I'm going to start learning Excel and I'm going to give it an hour a day for the next two weeks. You know, whatever it is, create a schedule and then just follow the schedule and learn the skills. Right. And so if people follow this process, then they will have gotten from this place of having just basic computer skills to this place of having all of the skills they need in order to be a data analyst. And so what we're doing here is we're getting this very detailed outline of exactly what it is that we are going to teach people so that they get the results that they want to get. Um, and you're going to want to do this for every, every step of your first barbell chart, right? So my first step was learn the skills and this is how to learn the skills. Then my next step was um, apply to resume. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to start a new barbell chart. Uh, and I'm going to get all the steps from just having the skills to having a, a convincing resume for getting a data analyst job. And I'm going to keep doing that for every, every step on the, the original barbell chart that I created. And so I'm going to have a very clear outline of how I'm going to teach this. And there are a few benefits to doing this. One is that you, it's, it's very clear what you're going to do. Right? It's very clear how you're going to help your clients. Uh, and so that, that works for actually communicating to your clients and showing them that you can help them. And also it works wonders for your own confidence when you're talking to people. Right? Because if you're trying to sell somebody on something that you're not sure is, is really good or you're not sure it's going to work, uh, you're going to feel terrible about that. But if you have this all mapped out, you have all of the steps necessary to get them to the final goal. You are going to feel far more confident when you're talking to prospects. Okay, so once you have finished this process, once you've finished building out all of your barbell charts, then you've done step one, right? You've, you've reverse engineered your path and you have what you're going to teach. Now you do not have to create uh, detailed lesson plans. You don't have to create your scripts or your PowerPoints. You don't have to create materials. You don't have to do any of that stuff at this point. As long as you have the outline, that's enough. You can start selling at this point because there's really no point in, in going into all the time and effort to create a program before you have any actual students. Right? We're going to actually do this backwards where we get the students and then we create the program. But we do have to be clear on what's going to be taught in the program and that is what this section is for. So once we have this clear outline of what we're going to teach, then we get into the next steps which are finding your target audience and actually selling them on the program. Now I'm not going to get into how to do that on this video because it's getting kind of long already. but. I'm thinking I'm going to have a free training where I'm going to show you the rest of this process, where I'm going to show you how to get people into your program, how to figure out what people you should be targeting, how to speak their language in a way that's convincing to them, uh, and how to get the, to sell them into your program and, and how to ultimately how to deliver the program. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, then I will put a sign up link in the description below where you can sign up for that free training where I will show you how to do all of that. Again, this is an absolutely wonderful business model in almost every way. I mean, you can scale your income far beyond almost any job, right? I mean, even if, you, if you're working as a doctor or a lawyer, chances are you can make more money doing this than you, than you do in your current job. It also gives you a ton of freedom. You basically have full location freedom because you're doing this entirely from a computer so you can travel the world if you want to. You can work from home if you want to. Um, you can work sitting outside in your hammock, which is what I do kind of a lot uh, because uh, you don't need to co go into an office or anything to be able to do this. You don't need to hand something to somebody physically in order to be able to do this business. So it affords a ton of freedom. Uh, you can do it and really it only requires a few hours a week. You know, it's going to require a little bit more at the beginning just to set up the process. But once you have the process set up, it, it kind of just goes on autopilot. And all you need is a few hours a week to talk to clients and to teach people. So really, this is an absolute dream business. And it's one of the easiest businesses that you could possibly set up because you've already basically figured it out, right? You're just teaching people how to do the things that you've already done. And it's real easy to prove to people that you've already done them because you can show them. I mean, you can just give them a picture of one of your pay slips or you can show them a picture of your offer letter and say, hey, 
you know, I already have this job and I'm already making this much money. It's, it's super easy to prove to people. You know, I think it's funny that we have this kind of unspoken rule in our society that you're not supposed to tell other people how much money you make. Um, because if, if, that, if we didn't have that rule, then this kind of thing would be commonplace. That, you know, if I'm having a conversation with a new person, let's say I meet you for the first time, and um, I say, what do you do for work? And you say, oh, I'm a database administrator. And you ask me, what do I do for work? And I say, well, I'm a data analyst. And then uh, I, you know, I ask you, how much do you make as a database administrator? Because that's not taboo anymore in our hypothetical world here. And you say, oh, I make $100,000. And you say, well, how much do you make as a, a data analyst? And I say, well, I make $70,000. And so I noticed the difference there. I'm like, if I could learn what you know, then I could be making an extra $30,000 a year. So my obviously, my next question would be, oh, well, that's pretty nice. How did you get into being a database administrator? And, and then you explain to me. Um, and, you know, these, these things would just kind of happen naturally if it wasn't for this rule that we can't share our salary with other people. And you know, I think the real reason for this is that we are, uh, we are really afraid of the possibility that somebody else might make more than us, right? If I'm in the possibility, if I'm in the position where I'm talking to you and you make more than me, well, I feel so ashamed because I make less money than you, then I just don't want to talk about it in the first place. And it's really ridiculous if you think about it. It's all pride, it's all ego. If we could, if we could just, shunt that aside, if we get, get rid of our stupid egos, then all of us would be so much richer and so much happier. Um, but no, we have, we have these stupid egos that are holding us back, which I won't go into a rant on because, you know, I've talked about this before, but you know, if you can get rid of your ego, then, then there's just so much more room for you to grow and so much more room for your life to get better. But anyway, the upside to this is that because so many people are afraid to share their salary information, that the people that are not afraid uh, have a, a ton of income opportunities from this, like I've shown in this video. So I hope you found this helpful. If so, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up uh, because it makes YouTube like me better. Or if you're watching this on another platform, hit the fire icon or you know whatever the thumbs up equivalent is. Subscribe to my channel, follow my channel, share this video with anybody who might be helpful too. And again, if you would like to join that free training that I told you about where I show you how to market this process, essentially how to actually get people to sign up for your program, then sign up in the link below. Again, that training is going to be completely free. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.